Good day, everybody. Welcome to our first class in organic chemistry. Organic chemistry. You know, chemistry is divided into different branches. We have physical chemistry. We have inorganic chemistry. We have organic chemistry and we have other branches like analytic chemistry, nuclear chemistry and so on. But in this class we are going to start the first topic in organic chemistry. And let's define what is organic chemistry. What is organic chemistry? What is organic chemistry? So, what is organic chemistry? Organic chemistry, we are it now, is the study of carbon, the study of carbon compounds. Organic chemistry is the study of carbon compound excluding listen to this very carefully excluding the carbides we explain those things like carbides excluding carbides like carbide sulfide right oxide and carbonate and Carbonate. The reason why we exclude those parts is because those compounds do not fall into the characteristics of organic compound. Those compounds, like the carbide, an example of carbide is carb, um, calcium carbide, right? Uh, and those are carbide sulfide. There is compound formed between carbon and sulfur, oxide, like the carbon dioxide. Those compounds formed between carbon and oxide, carbonate, like triosocarbonate. Those compounds do not fall into the organic chemistry compound. They are not organic compounds, so we do not study them in organic chemistry. The compounds that are to be studied in this organic chemistry, which are organic compounds, are very, very broad. And that is what we are going to be studying as time goes on. Example of those compounds are the arcanes. Under the arcanes, we have methane, akine. Under the akine, we have methane, the benzene. Now let's begin to go into the characteristics of organic compound as we begin to continue the course. So the first thing I will talk about is the theory or the concept of catenation. Is the concept of catenation. What is catenation? What is catenation or catenation? What is catenation? Catenation is the ability for carbon to form long chains with itself, right? For example, when we begin to go, we begin to see compounds like this. This ability is called catenation. Only carbon has this ability to form long chains between itself to form connected bonds between itself although we can have something like ozone ozone is um something like this o2 we can have phosphorus forming compounds like this but it is not as strong as carbon 
they are limited they are not as strong as carbon only carbon has the ability to form very long chains with itself and this makes carbon are we getting it now to be unique this makes carbon to be unique so catenation is the ability in case you are asking an exam for carbon to form long chain with itself that is catenation and this ability for carbon is the basis of organic chemistry so after we are through with catenation make sure you are writing those things down because they are very very important those definition and concepts after we are through with catenation the next thing we are going to be talking about is hydrocarbons hydrocarbons and non hydrocarbons and non hydrocarbons those things are very very important trying to make organic chemistry as simple as possible hydrocarbons are we getting it now are organic compounds that contain carbon that contain carbon and hydrogen only they contain carbon and hydrogen only from the word hydro hydro means hydrogen and carbon so hydrocarbon are organic compound that only contain carbon and hydrogen there is no other element attached to it they only contain carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms those type of compound are called hydrocarbons then non-hydrocarbons listen very carefully because it's very important non-hydrocarbons are carb are compound that we get it now non-hydrocarbons are compound that contains all the elements in addition to carbon and hydrogen so let's know the difference between hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon non-hydrocarbons also contain carbon and hydrogen but the difference is that there are other elements added to it are we getting it now for example oxygen so non-hydrocarbons are compounds are compounds are we getting it now are compounds containing other elements contains other elements example of this element e.g. Um, oxygen it contains other elements like oxygen so for etc are we getting it now in addition in addition to there is no space carbon in your IC and hydrogen so in, when you are writing it make sure you write it in full so they contain other elements this other element now for bonds with the hydrocarbons I get it now so these are non hydrocarbons now under these hydrocarbons we can classify hydrocarbons into two main branches hydrocarbons can be classified into two main branches the first branch of hydrocarbon we are going to be talking about is the aliphatic hydrocarbons there are two branches we have aliphatic hydrocarbons sorry aliphatic hydrocarbons and we have aromatic hydrocarbons so we have aliphatic hydrocarbons and we have aromatic hydrocarbons those things are very important aliphatic and aromatic hydrocarbons so what are aliphatic 
I drew carbons. What are aliphatic hydrocarbons? Aliphatic hydrocarbons. Listen very carefully <laughs> because it's very important. Aliphatic hydrocarbons are organic compounds. Remember, hydrocarbons are compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen only right now are this type of hydrocarbons that have straight chains or branch chains aliphatic special right to see that are compound with straight or branch chains straight chains can be like this right for example we have we have something like this um, see to C, to C, to C, right? And uh, we now have each year, each year, each year, those, you can see it looks like a straight line, right? This is a straight chain. These are aliphatic hydrocarbons. Why branch chain can be something like this? We can have C here, C here. Right, we can have C H C have H 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 have H. Why is this a branch chain? Because we see that a carbon atom has just branched to the downside right you see we have a carbon to C here we also have another carbon to C it's like branch then going like this all these are still hydrocarbons they are still what hydrocarbons but it is under aliphatic hydrocarbons which are branch or straight chain straight or branch chain anyway also under aliphatic hydrocarbons we have what we call a cyclic compound sorry we have what we call cyclic compounds straight and branch chains are called a cyclic compound the one we just explained they are called a cyclic compound right now cyclic compounds are still under hydrocarbons but the diff but those cyclic compounds should not contain are we getting it now those cyclic compounds should not contain benzene derivative or when we talk about aromatic we understand what is benzene for example we can have something like this Right, this is an this is cyclic compound. It means that we have carbon here, carbon. We have carbon here. We have carbon here. All carbon bonded to hydrogen. Or so whatever we begin to do the next lecture, we understand this better. So, aliphatic hydrocarbons are on are grouped into two parts. Are cyclic hydrocarbons and cyclic hydrocarbons. Cyclic hydrocarbons are cyclical compounds like closed compounds, right? Something like this. They are like closed compounds that do not have benzene derivative. Just write it down. Don't worry, when we begin to talk about benzene derivative, you understand what we really mean by this. Now let's talk about aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons. I think this will be the end of the class. It's going to be about 14 minutes now. Aromatic hydrocarbons.
What are aromatic hydrocarbons? Aromatic hydrocarbons are organic compounds. Are we getting it now? That contain benzene compound. We can also say a compound that are benzene derivatives. Are we getting it now? Now, before we begin to go further, let's talk about benzene. Benzene, we'll talk about benzene when we get to it's a topic on its own, but let's quickly re uh, revise or refresh what is benzene so that you understand the concept. Benzene is C6 type carbon cis H6. The structure of benzene is like this C to C to C. To C, to C, to C, and to C. Now there is an alternation of double bond, which means first we have single bond, next double bond, single bond, next double bond, single bond, next double bond. Right now, each carbon is bonded to a hydrogen atom. Each carbon is bonded. To a hydrogen atom. This is the structure of benzene. Also, benzene can be written like this. Benzene can be written like this. It's also benzene. Right? Now, compounds that are derived from benzene or compounds that yes that have benzene ring structure are aromatic hydrocarbons so you now know the difference between aromatic and cyclic because cyclic do not have benzene ring structure now let us take um let's take this compound for example which is phenol phenol let's take phenol for example phenol is a derivative of benzene and the structure for phenol is like this C6 H5OH. So it's like this. This is phenol. We have benzene here. Then we have one of the carbon atom bonded to a hydroxide. Um, to a hydroxide, right? This will be C6, right? Now the H is no longer 6 now because one of them has been replaced with hydroxide. So it's H5OH. This is phenol. Another derivative of benzene, another derivative of benzene is toluene. It's the same thing, just that one of the carbon atoms is bonded to a methyl group. Don't worry, we'll begin to talk about nomenclature, we'll begin to understand methyl and those other names. So this is C6H5CH3. C6, this is called toluene. It's called what? Toluene. We also have other groups like the silene, 